Hello, hello! Welcome to my channel. Today I will be doing a screen cap redraw of one of the Tsurumi Island perch trees from the game Genshin Impact. In this video, I'll be sharing my thoughts on the process of this painting, as well as chatting a bit about Genshin. Let's jump right into it. I start off by mixing a thin wash of paint, then using it to sketch out the key elements of my painting. In the past, I would start with a pencil sketch, but found that at least for landscapes, I would get too focused on trying to sketch out details too early. I decided to switch to using paint directly from my sketch to force me to focus on the big picture elements, like composition and overall lighting. During this stage, I focus on placement and rough colors more than anything else. Gouache is a medium that allows you to work light to dark or dark to light, so I'm not worrying about getting the exact colors right just yet. What's more important is laying down a clear foundation for me to build on top of. Once the base layer is down, I start fleshing out the different components of the piece, which in this picture are the tree, the cliffs in the background, and the rocky sections at the bottom of the composition. I like to build up the elements together rather than fully rendering one at a time since that allows me to focus more on the big picture rather than getting bogged down in details. I like to use similar colors to thematically tie elements together, that way the piece looks more holistic. One thing I found challenging about working on this piece was the fact that in the reference photo, there is very little value or hue differentiation between the tree and the cliffs. This means I had to figure out how to render the tree in such a way that it stood out from the background while still maintaining the glowiness of the reference. The cliffs are a shadowy cool gray, while the tree trunk is a slightly darker brown color, so if I wasn't careful, the tree trunk would melt into the cliffs. What I decided to do was paint the cliffs lighter overall, darken the outlines of the tree trunk to help it stand out, and make sure the tree was more detailed than the cliffs. The end result is different from the photo reference, but that's what makes screen cap redraws unique. You're not trying to be a camera or a printer or generate the same image, rather you're trying to put your own spin on the source material. As you can see, I've started to roughly define the shapes and colors of the cliffs. Something I discovered as I started painting more landscapes is that I actually really enjoy painting rocks. Something about the way the rocky surfaces have both rough and smooth sections, as well as high contrast between light and dark areas, is really satisfying for me to render. What I tend to do is first define the shapes formed by the darkest areas, then fill in a mid or highlight color for the surface, then finally mix the in-between colors to build up the form layer by layer. Because I'm using regular and not acrylic gouache, if I lay down a color that's a little too dark or light compared to the layer beneath it, I can always re-wet the area and blend it down until I'm happy with the result. In general, that's basically what my process is. Define edges between large shapes, fill in the areas with a mid-tone color, mix in additional highlights or shadows, then blend and repeat. So the reason I decided to paint this was, one, I love painting landscapes, and two, Genshin Impact has some really beautiful environments in it, and those environments are composed of unique features such as this tree. If you're unfamiliar with Genshin, basically it's an open world gacha game where you're a traveler exploring this foreign continent trying to find your lost sibling. I won't delve too deep into the story or lore, but the main thing you need to know is that this specific tree is on an island that was once ruled by a Thunderbird deity. There are several of these trees on said island, and they're called perches because the Thunderbird used to perch on them. Visually, the trunk looks like that of a regular tree, but what makes the design unique is that the leaves are actually feathers. I love that the designers build the world in this way. They take simple concepts like trees or mountains, but enhance them in the way that intertwines them with the history and lore of the setting. These trees look like this to thematically match the deity that used to live here, or those cliffs are shaped the way they are, because they were formed by a god hurling spears into the ocean during an ancient war. It makes the environment feel very alive and intentional. You don't feel like you're just exploring some generic RPG wilderness, but rather you're immersed in a world that was shaped by and influences many of the characters you play as. One thing I really enjoyed about this painting was the color scheme. My favorite colors to paint with are purple, blue, and pink, all of which are present in this piece. The only downside about my purple paint is that for some reason, it's extremely hard to re-wet. I forgot to mention, but I'm using Holbein gouache on Canson XL watercolor paper for this piece. I'll list the supplies in the description below. Anyway, these paints come in tubes, so usually I'll squeeze some out onto my mixing plate to use while wet, but recently I was taking this gouache class where the instructor used them dried out in a pan, so lately that's how I've been working. Most of the colors re-wet pretty easily, but unfortunately for me, the purple does not. If I want to get more purple, I have to swirl the brush in the pan for way longer than the other colors. 
Sometimes I give up and scrape the paint out of the pan and crush it in the palette because I don't want to waste it. Now I know to just squeeze out purple as needed rather than letting it dry and fighting it. So here you might notice me painting over all the cliffs, even though I'd already added a lot of detail to them. The reason I did that was because I felt like the background was getting too detailed, resulting in the tree not standing out from the cliffs as much as I wanted. I decided I needed to deepen the overall color and smooth out a lot of the textures I had added in. In that gouache class I took, the instructor would often paint over entire sections of her painting even after adding details because she wasn't fully satisfied with how it looked. She mentioned that we shouldn't be afraid to make bold decisions like that in our own paintings because it could allow us to paint something even better. As a result, I've tried to not be as precious about the marks I've put down and have been more willing to paint over entire sections I'm not happy with. It's kind of hard to break out of the oh no I'm gonna mess everything up mentality, but I don't think I'm completely erasing all my hard work by doing this. Because the layer of gouache I add on top is fairly watery, a lot of the texture from underneath still peeks through, resulting in even more depth and complexity in those areas. My previous work isn't all gone, rather it's become another foundation layer for whatever I add on top of it. Here I added another layer of blue as well, and I think doing that helped tie in the cliff colors to the leaf colors. Because I tend to re-wet dried up colors on the palette rather than squeezing out fresh paint, the layers I work with tend to be pretty watery. This means my light colored mixes are not opaque enough to show up against the dark background. To fix this, I'll squeeze out fresh white paint and lay some down as a base layer for my actual color to go on top of. Because I don't add water to the white paint, it maintains its opacity and covers the dark areas effectively, allowing the watery color layer to be more visible when painted on top. Here you see me adding details to the leaves. This sort of dabbing and texture is actually my favorite technique for gouache and watercolor paintings. It's very relaxing to do, and you can layer in a lot of colors to build depth. I use the deeper ultramarine blue to define the shadow areas, then go back in with the lighter sky blue for highlights. I also paint some dark blue around the ground feathers to create more contrast and help the lighter details stand out. The last thing I do is add in white speckles. I manually painted them in because I was running into issues using the splatter and tap method. I used both paint and Posca pen here. And now for the best part. And here's the finished piece! This painting was challenging and took me several days to finish, but overall I'm happy with how it turned out. Let me know what you think, and let me know if there are other Genshin landscapes you'd want to see me paint. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.